خادمین مسیحی از سراسر سر جهان با هم گرد آمده و این برنامه بین المللی را پایگذاری کردند. این دروس به نحوی تدارکی ده شدند که به کلیسا یعنی جمع ایمانداران در بین ملت ها کمک کنند و آنها را در فهم و ادراک بیشتر از ایمان مسیحی خود مدد نمایند و ایمانداران را به خادمین خدا تبدیل سازند. موضوع این درس خدمت کمک و این درس توسط آقای بادی بل تدریس میشه. Hello, I'm Buddy Bell, and I've come today to share with you about a ministry in the Bible that very few people have ever heard of. سلام به همه شما. من بادی بل هستم. امروز آمدم با شما در مورد موضوعی صحبت کنم، خدمتی صحبت کنم که خیلی از ما در کلیسا از اون بی اطلاع هست. I've come to talk to you about those who help امروز بخوام in the church. درباره اون کسانی صحبت کنم که در کلیسا کمک می کنند. I've come today to challenge you, to provoke you. اومدم که شما رو به چالش بکشم، شما رو بیدار کنم. To help you find your place in the body of Christ. و به شما کمک کنم که جایگاه خودتون رو در بدن مسیح پیدا کنید. To, to know that there's more to church and just coming in, holding the chairs down, smiling at your pastor and going home. که کلیسا یه چیزی بیشتر از اینه که بیاید به کلیسا روی صندلی بشینید و به کشیش خودتون یه لبخندی بزنید و بعدم برید. If you open up your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 27. کتاب خودتون رو باز کنید. اول قرنتیان فصل 12 آیه 27. And while you're turning there, I want you to reach out and grab your neighbor's hand. همطور که دارین آیه رو پیدا می‌کنید، برگردید به طرف اون که بغل دستتون نشسته، دستش رو بگیرید. Shake it. با او دست بدید. Let him know you're alive today. و به اونا بگید بابا من امروز زنده ام. I don't know about you, but there's been times I've grabbed people's hand and when I grabbed it, I thought, hmm, they're dead. من در مورد شما نمی‌دونم، ولی خودم خیلی وقتا با بعضیا دست دادم که وقتی داشتم دست می‌دادم گفتم آیا این طرف زنده است. You ever grab somebody's hand in church like that? God wants us to be alive. He wants us to be a living sacrifice. Can I have one amen? Now, if you've never said amen in a service, out loud while the preacher is preaching, you can do it today. I loose you in Jesus' name. <laughs> We're going to have a good time. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. The Bible says a merry heart doeth good as a medicine. Do you know somebody needs some medicine? Look at your neighbor and say, I know who you're talking about, Brother Bell. Now, did you let go of your neighbor's hand? Grab it again. And we're going to pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for all those around the world that are listening to this teaching. That they're going to be stirred in their hearts to be the army that you call them to be. Thank you for preparing their hearts. Thank you for preparing their minds. Now, Father, I thank you on my behalf. For clarity of speech. And for simplicity of thought. And I continue to thank you for the anointing that it flows like it's never flowed before. In Jesus' name. And we all said. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Over 20 years ago, I got saved in a small community in the state of Illinois in the USA. I went to a revival with my wife because we had gotten into a little, little spirit. Argument. من و خانم من یکی از این جلسات بیداری مسیحی رفته بودیم چون یکم با هم مشاجره کرده بودیم. Because she was wanting me to go to this revival and I didn't want to go. او میخواست که بره برای این جلسه من نمیخواستم. So I felt bad about the argument, so I went to the revival. من درباره این مشاجره که کرده بودیم ناراحت بودم رفتم به این جلسه بیداری. The second night of the revival, I was the first one to the altar. در این جلسه بود من اولین کسی بودم که رفتم جلو برای توبه. 
I was there for over an hour. I, I, every ounce of fluid in my body was drained out. But no one said anything to me about receiving Jesus. I went home. The next day, all the churches in the community came to our door. And they said, buddy, we heard you went forward in the church and we want you to come to our church. A friend of mine who had a Bible study invited us to come to their Bible study. My wife and I went to that Bible study that night. And they were teaching on Romans 10, 9, and 10. On the way home from that Bible study, I told my wife, I said, you know, these people at the Bible study, they think we've, we're saved, that we've received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. I said, I've never seen that in the Bible before. And so that night on the highway between uh, uh, the two uh, communities that, that uh, we lived in, my wife and I received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Now nothing spectacular happened. The, the hood of our car didn't fly up and go, Hallelujah, they got saved. این کاپوت ماشین ما بلند نشد فریاد بزنه هی اینا نجات پیدا کردن We didn't black out and wake up in our garage یا اینکه قش نکردیم بیافتیم توی گاراژمون اونجا But we went home saved according to the word of God ولی رفتیم به خونه خودمون و همونطور که کلام خدا میگه ما نجات رو دریافت کردیم I told my wife we needed to go to a church به خانم من گفتم حالا ما بایستی که شروع کنیم به رفتن به کلیسا Because we're, we're Christians now چون ما حالا مسیحی هستیم and so we started attending a small church in our community. And while attending there, God spoke to me. Now I know it was God speaking to me because the words were coming from here, from my, from my inner man and not from my head. God said to me, I want you to get involved in the church. I want to be honest with you, I, I wasn't happy just going to this church and just sitting there and listening to the pastor and going home. Be honest with you, I, I would leave church at times thinking there's got to be more. There's got to be more than just driving over here and just sitting here and listening to the pastor, smiling while he's preaching and going home. My heart was I wanted to repay God. Now I know I can I can never fully repay God, but I wanted to try. So I looked around and I thought, now who, who's who's involved in this church? Who does more than just come and just sit here like myself and go home? In that, in that church, it was the elders in the church. And I thought, that's it. God's wanting me to become an elder here in this church. Now, please understand, I, I was not raised in church. I didn't know anything about church. متوجه باشید من در کلیسا بزرگ نشدم من اصلا چیزی در مورد کلیسا نمیدونم 
I was a farm boy. Man, ya rustai budam. All I knew was tractors and chickens and cattle and pigs. Man kishavarzi ra midunestam ra jebe tractor ra jebe morgo juja va ina midun. But God touched me. Vali khuda mara lamps. And changed my heart. Qalb mara avas. And I wanted to serve Him. Va man mikhasam ro khed. And I thought there's got to be more than just sitting here. So I, I got an appointment with the pastor. I thought, well, I'll go to the pastor and, and, and tell him I want to be an elder here in this church. Isn't that the way, way it's done? I went to my pastor. I, I sat down. I told him, I said, Pastor, God spoke to me. I, I heard his words in my spirit. Get involved in the church. رفتم پیش شبان نشستم گفتم جناب شبان خداوند به من گفته که من باید تو این کلیسا بیشتر مشغول بشم و کاری انجام And I believe what he's saying to me is is to become a, an elder here in this church. و خداوند داره من میگه که من باید جزء یکی از مشایخ این کلیسا باشم. I said, can I become an elder here in this church? He said I had to wait until one of them died. Now this is a true story. این داستان واقعیه ها. He said, I had to wait until one of them died. So I asked him, I said, well, who are the elders in this church? We had 21 elders in this church. This was a church that ran about 100. Do you know any churches like that? And so he named off all these men, all these elders to me. I knew these men. I farmed with these men. I, I sat at the elevators with these men. Oh, they, they knew God. They knew Jesus. They'd mention their names after every other word that came out of their mouths. And I thought, is this what God's wanting me to become? Pastor smiled at me, said, well, buddy, when one of them dies, we'll get a hold of you. And I thought, well, what's going on here? I know, I know all these men. None of them are ready to die. Why is God telling me to become an elder? I got up and I left that pastor's office. And I walked out on his porch and something happened to me. I experienced something that I hadn't experienced up to that moment in my Christian walk. Confusion came into my life. This wasn't lining up. I thought God was telling me to do this. And I was being taught and told that God knows everything. So he must know that they only elect elders after one of them dies. So there must be one ready to die or he wouldn't be telling me to become an elder. I'm a very simple person. Two plus two to me is four. And this wasn't lining up. Hosea 4, 6 says, For my people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. I believe that evening, that process began in my Christian walk. I wanted to find my place in the body of Christ. I wanted to do more than just go to church. I wanted to know that I was a part of what God was doing on the earth. There are thousands of people all over this world that are searching to find their place in the body of Christ. A desire to serve the Father, to do the work of the ministry. I 
I wanted to serve God. Confusion came into my life. Buddy Bell was slowly being destroyed now because of a lack of knowledge. Buddy Bell داشتش که از عدم معرفت حلاک می شود. A few months went by, they licensed a young man in the church. چند ماهی گذشت داشتن مدارکی رو به جوانانی کلیسا می دادن. And I thought, well, that's it. God's wanting me to get licensed. من پیش خودم گفتم بله همینه خدا می خواد من لیسانس بگیرم مدرک. I went to the pastor and asked him if I could get licensed. He says, do you have a degree? I said, a, deg I said, a degree? I said, what kind of degree do I need? He said, well, anything. I said, could I get a degree in agriculture? He said, sure. I mean, think about it, a preacher with a degree in agriculture. I could teach you all how to drive tractors and take care of cattle. But you know, I got excited at that moment. Because it seemed like I took a step forward now. I thought, well, I could go to the university that's near my hometown. And I could get a degree there in agriculture. So I said that to the pastor. He said, oh, no, you've got to go to our university. I said, where's your university at? It was 700 miles away from my home. I said, Pastor, I'd have to quit my job and move my family and, and start all over. He says, yeah, that's right. I got up and left that night. More confusion came into my life. But something else entered into my life. It was anger toward God. I wasn't angry at the pastor. I was angry toward God. I was being taught that, that God desired to give you the, the desires of your heart. But it seemed like every time I came to a door, he'd slam a door in my face. I wasn't being taught that God made your way hard. I was taught that God was a God of love. I just wanted to serve God. I just wanted to know that I was part of what God's doing here on the earth. I didn't want to be part of an audience. I wanted to be a part of an army. It got to a place that I didn't want to talk about God. I didn't want to talk about Jesus anymore in my home. I told my wife, I said, Kelly, I don't want to hear about God. I don't want to hear about Jesus. It seems like every time I figure out what he's saying to me, he slams the door in my face. What kind of God is this? I kept hearing those words still. Get involved. Get involved. Get involved. I went to the, a, a Bible study that we attended on Friday night. I came in and I sat down in the middle of the floor. I said, could somebody help me? Could somebody tell me what's going on in my life? I hear these words on the inside of me, get involved, get involved, and I know that it's God speaking to me. I thought he was telling me to become an elder, but I was told I had to wait until one of them died, none of them's ready to die. <laughs> then I thought he, he, he was telling me to get licensed, so I went to see about getting licensed, and I was told I had to move away. And, uh, hundreds of 
of miles away and start my life all over again. فکر کردم که داره من میگه مدرک تحصیلی بگی رفتم بگیرم ولی پاستور من میگه تو باید بری تا 700 کیلومتر از خونه دور بشی اینم برام مقدور نیست. I just want to serve God. I want to do more than just go to church and just sit there and listen and go home. The leader of the group looked at me and says, well, buddy, I know what's going on in your life. God's calling you into the ministry. And I looked at him and I said, oh, yeah. Here we go again. But he says, you know, you're going to have to go to a Bible school because you don't know very much about the Bible. I said, well, I don't want to go to no Bible school. I don't like schools. Doesn't God know that? He said, well, take a correspondence course. I said, well, what's a correspondence course? I didn't know what a correspondence course was. The next week, they brought me these brochures about these correspondence schools. And I looked at him, I thought, well, this, this is worse than going to school. All they talk about is you got to study, 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 study. You got to have study habits. You got to have good study habits. And doesn't God know that I don't know how to study? I didn't have to study when I was in school. <laughs> I tried flunking a couple of tests and I passed them. You say, well, Brother Bell, you must be a genius. Well, it wasn't that I was a genius. But I was the only quarterback on the football team. And he had to have passing grades to be able to play on Friday night. So when I figured that out, I had it made. I took those brochures home and I put them in a drawer and I was going to forget about it. But every night at the Bible study, people will say, Oh, buddy, buddy, have you started your correspondence course? Oh, we're so excited, buddy. God's calling you into the ministry. We're so excited. And I'd, I'd look at him, and just to get him to, uh, to be quiet, I'd say, Yeah, I've started him. And I thought, good night. God's got me lying now. Buddy Bell was slowly being destroyed because of lack of knowledge. I was confused. I was frustrated. I was angry at God. And I came to a place that many of us have come to at one time or another. I call it a spiritual cliff. And you got to make a decision. Am I going to go on with God or am I going to take the step and go back into the world and say, forget this? I didn't take that step that day. But I came to my wife and I said, Kathy, maybe, maybe God is calling me. I don't know. It's, I just keep hearing these words, get involved, get involved, get involved. And I just want to be what God wants me to be. And if that means I've got to go to a Bible school, then, then I'll go to a Bible school. So I heard about a Bible school that was, was hundreds of miles away from my hometown. And a very famous man of God was the head of this Bible school. And I told my wife, I said, maybe that man can help me. 
Maybe he can tell me what's going on on the inside of me. Maybe he can help me to understand what God is saying to me about getting involved, getting involved. So I sent off for an application to this Bible school. I lied on the application. Excuse me for my honesty. But God likes honest people. There were two questions on that application that are not on the application today. The questions were, are you called to the five-fold ministry? And I wrote yes because everybody had said I was. The next question was, which one are you called to? So I wrote down the one everyone around me said I was called to. God had not said anything like that to me. All he was saying was get involved, get involved. I had three little girls at that time. I loaded up my family. After waiting for almost three months for my house to sell before we moved. You know, the realtor told me that when we sell our home, that we would have $10,000 to start a new life with. We waited for three months, but the house didn't sell. And I thought, God, don't you ever slack up on a person? But I was so confused and so frustrated. And people around me were telling me, this is what you need to go do. So I loaded up my family and I took off for Bible school. I walked upon that Bible uh, school campus and the presence of God was so strong. I knew God lived here. He only visited where I lived at. And students would begin to ask me, well, what are you called to be, buddy? They would tell me, I'm called to be a pastor. I'm called to be an evangelist. I'm called to be a teacher. What's God saying to you? And I remember saying to myself, well, you know, I, I can't lie here. If, if God's going to strike anybody dead for lying, it would be right here. اگر خدا بخواد کسی رو اینجا برای دروغ گفتم بزنه من خواهم بود نفر اول منم you know you laugh but that's the fear of god شما میخندید اینجا ولی این ترس خدا بود and that's what a lot of people need today in the body of christ is the fear of god خیلی از ماها احتیاج داریم امروز این ترس خدا رو داشته باشیم so i would say look at him and say well uh, all i hear inside of me is get involved به اونا نگاه کردم گفتم اون چی که خدا به من میگه اینه که میگه تو داخل شو تو وارد این کار کلیسایی بشو and they'd smile and say oh and walk away اونا یه لبخندی میزدن میگفتن آها بعد از من دور Students were walking around saying, I'm going to pastor a church of thousands. I'm going to prophesy for hours. I'm going to go overseas and win millions for Jesus. What are you going to do, buddy? And all I could say was, well, these people in, In my hometown said I need to come here and and God's saying get involved. من میتونستم فقط به اونا بگم که مردمی که توی شهر ما بودن گفتن من بیام اینجا و خدام هی به من میگه که تو باید وارد بشی وارد قضايا کلیسای. بعضیا بلند میخندیدن و میرفت. 
And that hurt. I thought God brought me all the way out here to do this to me. Buddy Bell was slowly being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We were attending a, a large full gospel church at that time. And it was announced one Sunday morning that was a, there was a new church that was going to be starting in the community. A very famous man of God was starting this church. And I told my wife, I said, well, let's go to that church. And so when that morning came, we loaded our three little girls up and we drove across town to this new church. There were 164 people there that morning. We were all excited. What's going to happen in the first service? What's he going to preach on? And the man of God came out at that time and he said, open up your Bibles to 1 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 22. He says, I'm, I'm going to be quoting this verse at the beginning of every service, but I might not preach on this verse. And it goes like this, moreover there are workmen of us in abundance, hoers and workers of stone and timber, and all manner of cunning men for every manner of work. Then he preached his message, it didn't have anything to do with that verse. I loaded up my family and started home. I told my wife, I said, Kathy, we're going back to that church. She says, oh, no, buddy, we don't want to go back to that church. The, the, the nursery is not very good, and we had a little baby. I said, but Kathy, we're going back to that church. I don't know why, but we're going back. The next service, Bad. the pastor came out. Moreover, there are workmen of us in abundance, hoers and workers of stone and timber, and all manner of cunning men for every manner of work. That morning on the way home again, I told my wife, we're going back to that church. Today, I know what he was doing. He was literally speaking live to those who God has called the help in the body of Christ. The Bible says in Romans that we're supposed to be a glow and burning with the Spirit. But my flame was almost gone. The glow that was on the inside of me in the beginning was almost out. But every time I heard those words, moreover there are workmen of us in abundance, who is in workers of stone and timber, and all manner of cunning men for every manner of work. That flame on the inside of me flickered bigger. It got brighter. And after two months of attending that church, I wasn't happy just coming and sitting there. I wanted to do something. 
I wanted to be involved in this church. It's like God opened me up and he poured a supernatural love on the inside of me for that church and my pastor. It was the same thing that I experienced back in my hometown. I just wanted to serve God. I started looking around the church for something that I could do. I remember I looked at the piano. I thought, well, I don't know how to play the piano. I remember I looked at the sound booth and I thought, well, I don't know anything about sound. I looked at the pulpit and I thought, well, they're definitely not going to let me preach. The Bible says that to make your love sincere a real thing. To make your love sincere a real thing. What was happening to me was that love on the inside of me was causing me to look for something that I could be real in. اون محبتی که در وجود من قرار داشت داشت برای وادار میکرد که من اون محبت رو به یک چیز ملموس به چیز واقعی تبدیل کنم God's looking for real people. Look at your neighbor and ask him, are you real for God? I remember I looked at the back door and I saw these men handing out bulletins and shaking people's hands. And I thought, I could do that. Really, anybody could do that. But you know, it took me a week to get enough courage to go ask them if I could be in that ministry. You know why? Because I was afraid they was going to say no. And it was going to start all over again. I walked up to that gentleman that morning and I said, Sir, do you need any help? He said, sure, what's your name? I said, Buddy Bell. He said, well, sure, buddy, just stand here and hand bulletins to everyone and shake their hands and hug them and, and, and tell them that Jesus loves them. He should have never done that. I was the first one there every Sunday morning. I had a big smile on my face. My life made a 180 degree turn. This confusion and frustration and anger was beginning to leave me now. And this joy that I had when I first became a Christian began to fill my life again. Oh, I couldn't tell you that time why it was happening. But it was happening in my life. The joy of the Lord started to come back into my life. At Bible school, they would ask me, what are you doing at that church, buddy? I said, well, I'm handing out bulletins and working in the nursery and cleaning the church on Saturday night. And they would look at me and say, well, when are they really going to let you do something big there? Now, I hope you can understand this. But I said to myself, you know, I've been down that road. I didn't like it. And where I'm at right now, I'm happy. I'm on fire again. Blessings are beginning to come back into my life. But you know, every time I turned around, 
Christians would look at me and call me names. Maybe you've never heard these names before. It's names like weird and strange and different. Because I worked in the nursery with my wife. Because I cleaned the church on Saturday night. Because I handed out bulletins on Sunday morning. Because I'd do just about anything they wanted me to do there in the church. I was called weird and strange and different. And the one that hurt the most. They would look at me and say, God broke the mold when he made you, Brother Bell. And those words cut and they cut deep. Some people say, well, Brother Bell, those are compliments. Well, they might be compliments to you, but I would go home at night and I would cry. I would cry to God and say, God, why, why do people call my wife and I names? Why do they call us weird? Why do they call us strange? Why do they call us different? My pastor says Christians do these things. We go and do them, we're not called Christian, we're called weird, we're called strange, we're called different. My pastor says Christians do these things. Why are not we called Christian? Why are we called strange and different? Why are we told you broke the mold when you made us? And then I'll never forget the Sunday morning that I sat in church. And I opened up the first Corinthians chapter 12. Now you should be there. I told you to turn there about an hour ago. And he read verse 27. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And verse 28. And he read, and God has sent some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles and gifts of healings, helps, governments and diversities of tongues. He stopped just for a moment on that little word helps there. یه لحظه اونجا روی کلمه اعانات یا کمک مکس کرد. We're talking about those who help. ما درباره کسانی میخوایم صحبت کنیم که He spoke just for a moment on about those who help in the church. یه لحظه درباره اونهایی صحبت کرد که در کلیسا کمک میکنند. I said there were tears in my eyes. اش تو چشمای من بود. I said to myself, you know, buddy, you're not weird. You know, buddy, you're not strange. You know, you're not different. And most of all, buddy Bell, God didn't break the mold when he made you. But the mold is still in the Bible. I searched for five and a half years trying to find my place in the body of Christ. Five and a half years I was confused and frustrated, many times very angry toward God. I just wanted to do more than just come to church and just sit there and just listen.
I knew God was speaking to me to be involved. A lot of times all we hear about is just apostles and prophets and teachers and, and evangelists and pastors. But what about those who help? God didn't forget about them. We're all particular members in the body of Christ. God didn't desire for me to be an apostle or a prophet. But he desired for me to be one of those who help in the church. See, there was nothing wrong with me because I got excited during the offering time because I was one of the ushers that got to pass the buckets. There was nothing wrong with me because pastor asked, could someone come and, and fold bulletins and put them together and get them ready for Sunday morning? There was nothing wrong with me because I wanted to be doing that. من یه چیزی کم نداشتم چون دلم میخواست که این بولتن ها رو آماده بکنم بیارم یه شنبه صبح اونجا بیستم به دیگران بدم این هیچ عیب 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 و ایرادی در این کار من نبود There was nothing wrong with me because I wanted to help in the nursery and children's church and in the youth ministry هیچ خطایی در من نبود که دلم میخواست به بچه ها کمک کنم با نوجوانان سر کله بزنم There was nothing wrong with me because I wanted to drive the van and pick up those who didn't have a ride for church این هیچ عیبی نداشت که من دلم میخواست پشت اون ماشین کلیسا بشینم کسایی که ماشین نداشتم ببرم به خونه هاشون برسونم بیارمشون به کلیسا این اون خدمتی بود که من میخواستم کمک بکنم به دیگران این اون محبت خدا در درون من بود این اون خدمتی بود که خدا در درون من قرار داده بود این جایگاه من بود در کلیسا اون بخشی بود که من میتونستم در کلیسا به احتمال دیدم خیلی از شما هستید که الان دارید به این ویدیو نگاه میکنید and your place in the body of Christ is to help جایگاه شما در بدن مسیح اینه که کمک کنید to be involved in your church در کارهای کلیسا مشغول باشید to be con- committed to the vision that God has given to your pastor تعهدی داشته باشید نسبت به اون دیدگاه و رؤیایی که خدا به شبان شما داده Before that vision to be fulfilled, there has to be an army there. There has to be those that say, I, I don't have to stand behind a pulpit to serve God. I can help run television cameras. I can sweep the church on Saturday night. I can come early and set up chairs. I can come and run the sound system. My heart is to help. And it says here that God set that into my heart. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this morning. And Father, I thank you for all those that are watching and listening to this teaching. Father, there is a mighty army that you're speaking to right now. There are those that you desire to use behind the scenes. با اونهایی که تو میخوای از اونها نه در صحنه بلکه در پشت صحنه استفاده کن. but not realizing and understanding that that is important to you. Many have not stepped out into that ministry. Father, speak to our hearts. Let us know our value and our importance. And help us be the servant that you've called us to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.